The showdown in last night's game between the Warriors and Celtics was crucial for both teams, as the winner of Game 5 usually wins the whole series. While Boston won the battle, in terms of limiting Steph Curry's box score output, they lost the war as Andrew Wiggins took advantage of the D's focus on Curry and the Warriors have full control over their own destiny. Steph Curry was involved in 29 possessions where he got either a ball screen or a dribble handoff. And here's how the Celtics played him and the final result of the possession. Early in the first, they target Robert Williams, and Marcus Smart has been harassing Curry's dribble all series long, but Curry regains control, and because of the drop, Curry can get into the lane before dumping off a pass for a green finish, something Draymond had been struggling mightily to do. But I also want you to see why the typical help wasn't in position. Notice how Jalen Brown is ignoring the play to completely face guard Clay in the deep corner. Normally, he'd be bumping down to offer support, but they clearly don't want Curry skipping the ball for an open corner three. There were big stretches of the game where it seemed Curry wasn't involved in the offense, and here's why. Check how Marcus Smart is face guarding Curry at the hash mark. He doesn't care where the ball is much, and he's not going to offer anyone else help rotation. The secondary flow is a pin down for Clay, and I appreciate the athletic maneuver to get around the screen to dissuade the shot. With Curry left spectating in the coffin corner, the Warriors make this 4 on 4. Wiggins gets into Tatum's body to bump him off before sidestepping for open space and a little 13-footer. This time, Brown has to pick up Curry in transition, and he also denies the ball all the way near the half-court line. Porter is clearly bothered by the pressure and no one to pass to, and when he finally gets it to Curry, the defense traps him in the corner. The lovely lefty behind the back pocket pass gets Draymond doing what he does best, short rolling towards the hoop. With Smart rotating over, there was no need for Horford to get to the midline here, and the skip pass opens up a wide open shot. But for how hot Wiggins was near the basket, he couldn't hit a three all night. For a lot of the first half, Curry seemed content to drag his man to the corner and let his teammates go four on four, as they force the Celtics to call their first time out after Draymond executes my favorite play, the fake handoff. Watch how Brown and Williams are so concerned with Clay at the three-point line, they get easily duped by the fake, and because Tatum was glued to Curry in the weak side corner, he's not there to protect the rim as Green throws it down for a big early lead. While the game plan to stop Steph was working fine, he had only taken one shot in five minutes, Smart again ignores his normal defensive position to make sure Curry isn't going to get the ball. As they shape up to run some sort of down screening action for Curry out of the corner, Clay gets a little impatient with the shot clock winding down and just hits Tatum with a quick pull up. Going this direction is harder for righties and Tatum gets a great contest but Clay still hits the jumper. By putting Grant Williams in the play, the Celtics switch this, but then they run another handoff that catches the Celtics and drop. Williams does a good job to dance around the screen, and notice that a simple exchange in the weak side screws up Derek White, who didn't switch and left Peyton open briefly, but it didn't matter much as Curry uses the threat of his shot to get middle, and for some reason, Williams doesn't get a hand up on this hop into a floater that displays incredible touch. In the modern era of three-point shooting, the way you handle yourself as a coach is even more vital since players shoot better when they're in a positive frame of mind. And I'm always advising coaches that they need an overarching goal for every interaction, which will help them keep their emotions under control and help their players knock down their shots from distance. That's exactly what Noom does to help and support you to eat better and live a more healthy lifestyle. With daily bits of information to digest, they slowly help you rethink how you approach eating and exercise. And I've got to say, after a couple of weeks, I've lost some weight and have totally changed how I eat. We all have behavior chains that sometimes need to be broken, and Noom's focus on getting into good habits really helped me get into a rhythm of healthy eating and exercise. By logging every meal, weighing in every day, and having a real person who is trained in psychology, fitness, and nutrition to speak directly to, Noom keeps my overall goals in sight. I don't get upset if I have a bad day now, since Noom is there to remind me that there's plenty of room to be myself on this road, and I just need to get back on the path for the next meal. Start building better habits for healthier, long-term results by signing up for a free evaluation and a free 7-day trial at Noom.com bball. 
The Celtics know the Warriors love to backscreen the inbounder with Curry, so they can put White on him to start and switch smart when Curry gets close to Porter. But the real play was pistol action on the left side, as Peyton sets the pin down for Wiggins, who then gets the handoff. Tatum needs a switch, but Horford is a step slow realizing it, and that's all the fleet-footed Wiggins needs to keep Al on his hip and elevate Strong over the contest to get the nice roll. One of the great things about the triangle offense is the tremendous flow it has from one action to the next. And the Warriors offense operates in a similar manner, as they run a ball screen to Curry's right, hoping to attack Horford. Curry draws a double and releases the pressure with the one pass the Celtics will let him have at any time, to the corner to Draymond Green. Peyton has shown some patience the series by not taking wide open threes in order to hunt a better shot, and we know Curry never stops moving after drives. So this quickly goes from a double ball screen to a low post split. The spin pass gets right to Draymond, and usually Curry would get a flare screen from Peyton, but he's impatient, cuts right to the hoop, and Draymond's drop step keeps the smaller white out of the way, leaving Smart no choice but to foul. Towards the end of the first half, they bring Horford up to dance again, and he does get his feet above the three-point line. Curry wastes no time trying to get by him, Derek White is in hot pursuit to double, and yet it doesn't matter one bit as Curry hits the mid-range step back. With the way they were face guarding Curry, the only way Coach Curry could get into attack was bringing the ball up to begin with. But Wiggins plays keep with Curry on the pinch post action, and has allowed Tatum to deny the ball back to Curry. But notice that after their initial action, it just flows right into a low post split, with Peyton ready to screen for whoever wanted to cut over the top of him. Clay slips back door, and Curry runs a cut he's been doing in his sleep for years. Brown is prepared and gets around that split screen, but goes for the good shot fake, and Curry makes this shot look a lot easier than it was. We got our first double team of Curry as Peyton ran over there to begin screening for him, but quickly gets out of there, allowing Tatum to improvise a little to get the ball out of Curry's hands. However, Curry knows Peyton had continued onto the rim, and the vicious hesitation that may or may not have included grabbing Tatum around the leg and pushing him away generates this gorgeous lefty short hop shovel pass on a line for a great assist and easy two points. When they hand off with Grant Williams involved, the Celtics will switch this, and now they run a step-up screen and fantastic rotations to stop the loony roll. He's clearly looking to dribble hand off with someone. Curry and Clay split off each other as Curry helps Grant Williams introduce himself to Looney a little more intimately, and look how Curry drags Brown with him with the fear that Curry could get open, but that leaves Clay with just a sliver of daylight to get this off. To give you an example of Steph Curry's mindset being off, he turns down an opportunity to shoot this three in transition, and when Wiggins brings Horford over to screen for him, they end up in a pseudo double team with Curry spinning into a non-traditional right-left footwork from 17 feet that ends up short. Just because Curry didn't make a three all night and his field goal percentage was low doesn't mean he didn't help create a lot of points anyway. While Andrew Wiggins was extremely aggressive in getting buckets on his own accord, Here's a couple of good examples where he was able to use the gravity of Curry to open up looks for himself. He does the same Draymond fake handoff we saw earlier, and although he doesn't finish on two attempts point blank, because it becomes a scramble, Draymond is able to find him with a nice pass and easy finish. And in the fourth, they execute another low post split. And despite Curry's poor shooting, he still attracts the double team to prevent the shot, and Wiggins gets a runaway to take off from, gliding between two defenders for the absolute gorgeous lefty finish. The double ball screen forces a switch of Tatum onto Curry, but then the re-screen here allows them to attack Williams. Watch how he uses the hop footwork and eye gaze to the rim to make Williams think it's a shot, then gets into the lane, attracts another defender before hook passing back to the left wing. Since Horford had to bump down to Peyton, it created a long closeout that Wiggins can attack. Horford is not supposed to allow middle, but look at his positioning. Had he been a step more to his left, he could have forced baseline into the waiting help of Williams. Instead, Wiggins is getting to that running hook shot he likes, and Horford is powerless to stop it. The Celtics like to put a much longer defender on Curry in Tatum, and as Golden State tries to end this game early, they go to their vaunted low post split. Tatum doesn't seem prepared for such a common action, as I'd expected him to move a step towards the screen so he'd be able to get around it easier. Instead, he's caught flat-footed for a step and a half, but the fact Curry doesn't hit this demonstrates that he was simply off his rhythm all night. The ideal timing on this shot would be the bottom of the dip synced to the toe tap of the left foot. You can see he swings his arm up a tad bit early, rushing the ball through his release point, and it was just enough to leave the shot four inches short. 
Now let's look at the part of the game where the Celtics did their most damage, notable since it's normally the Warriors' sole dominion to dominate third quarters. Kerr stuck with his Game 4 starting lineup of Otto Porter replacing Kevon Looney despite it getting blown off the floor in that game, and last night was no different. So much of the Celtics' offense was hunting Steph Curry as they try to get him onto Tatum. Wiggins goes underneath to prevent the switch, but on the rescreen, Marcus Smart holds a family reunion, hugs all around, while Tatum gets plenty of room to knock down the triple. Here comes another drag screen by Curry's man to get the matchup the Celtics want. Jalen Brown isolating out top, but Curry does a great job to angle him out of the lane where Draymond is waiting patiently near the block. This opened up both corners if he wanted the pass there. Smart is pissed he didn't get it, but it also forced Wiggins to bump down to split the difference between his man and Horford. That leaves Tatum a little room to move to the top and catch and shoot another three to close the once formidable Warriors lead down to two. I guess they got tired of attacking Curry for a possession, targeting Porter instead. And while Porter did an okay job keeping the ball in front, his contest is suboptimal. And check out Tatum uses the behind the back dribble into Gallup that shows a lefty drive, but really sets him up for the non-traditional left-right footwork to his left and a clean look to drop it through. This was an interesting set as the Celtics again want to use Smart to force Curry onto the ball. However, before that, Robert Williams cuts off the back screen from Brown, forcing a switch. With Looney involved in this pick and roll, he drops down to support Curry on the drive, and Wiggins has a decision to make. Close to the guy who was 1 for 3 from 3 at this point, or stay with the guy who was 4 for 6 and had recently hit one. Smart even hesitated for a second to make sure Wiggins wasn't coming and still swishes his clean through to tie the game. And pushing the ball up the court fast is always a great way to get open looks as the defense is scrambling to catch up. Draymond is zoning up the paint to stop Tatum in his tracks, and I'd argue there was no need to help here since Wiggins was in decent position to contest the potential shot at the rim. And watch how Robert Williams' cut to the hoop and little shove on Looney ensures he won't be able to rotate up to the trailing Horford, and they use a little of the Warriors' own medicine to get them the lead. With a 22-9 advantage in points off turnovers, the Celtics kept shooting themselves in the foot, despite shooting better from the three-point line and doubling them up on offensive rebounds. As part of the Marcus Smart experience, and don't get me wrong, he played very well in this game, but we're still bound to get some, well, unique plays. Like this spin move right back into his own roll man, and then the kind of fun he attempts at a gather as the ball shoots up into the air like a firework. And in the second, the Celtics set a pin down for Tatum coming in from the sideline. And with Gary Payton top locking him, Tatum makes the right cut. Payton grabs his arm, but Horford's hand gets too far underneath the ball. He can't control the height, and it sails into the stands, missing out on an easy two points. Jason Tatum committed four of their 18 turnovers, and watch what the Warriors do to combat the Celtics attacking Curry. He tells Otto Porter to guard smart, and then make sure Wiggins doesn't switch on this pin down. He knows they probably won't go down low on the block to Robert Williams, and it allows the more size-appropriate Porter to guard Tatum on the switch. They know Tatum can be shaky with his handle, so Porter is digging in there with his hand, Wiggins shows a hand in there too, and he's running out of space as Curry is waiting at the hoop. Tatum rushes the right-hand pass, loses control, and this one sailed in the stands too. But getting back to the Marcus Smart experience, when this sequence happened early in the fourth with the Warriors clinging to an eight-point lead, I wondered out loud whether this was going to decide the game. It looks like Smart is mad they didn't call a foul on Wiggins for this contact, but you can clearly see Smart flops to the ground. What makes matters worse is that the Celtics had just gotten the foul call, and yet Smart is bitterly complaining anyway, and the ref had had enough. In the NBA, technical fouls aren't a huge deal, it's only one free throw and you don't lose possession, but you do run the risk of disrupting your own team's emotional equilibrium. Now, with everyone in the gym watching Marcus Smart closely, he makes a big mistake to unnecessarily lash his arm out in the general direction of Jordan Poole's face. Now, the ultimate irony is that Poole didn't actually get hit, but pretends like he broke his nose, and basically he Marcus Smarted Marcus Smart. The moral of the story is, don't swipe wildly like this, and of course, it's Poole who beats Tatum to the spot and hits the early dagger, and the Celtics never recovered. While I was encouraged to see the Celtics mix up their coverage on Curry, I think it's time we all recognize just how immense his effect is on their offense. And even though he didn't score or shoot well, it's his gravity and decision making that opens up so much for his teammates. And this has always been the case in all his finals appearances. 
While the Celtics might be favored back at home in Game 6, I will simply remind you that it had been 1,313 days since Curry had last played in a game without any made three-pointers by him. And if you go a little further back to the last time before that where he hadn't scored a triple, in the very next game, he hit 13 of them. Oh, and yesterday was the 13th.